Hello everyone, this is CJ Novo992 and today we're back with another brand new video. Today is our video, we are finally back in action. After a weekend filled with happiness and joy, it is now time to say goodbye to domestic football and welcome back European football as tomorrow at 8 o'clock there's a European showdown happening between Rangers and Benfica. Now before we go ahead and talk about what is a truly massive game of football, as always, just a bit of a cheap plug, but you know, got to do it, people got to do it. If you are new around here, or even if you're a regular viewer who hasn't hit that subscribe button yet, like 53% of a regular audience, why not consider hitting that subscribe button? Free, doesn't cost you a penny, and it just helps us on our way to hopefully one day reaching 55k. But as this is a massive game of football that has some serious consequences in terms of qualification into the next round and the moolah that brings, let's get on with the video then, shall we? And diving right into the oppositional preview, it's time to talk about Benfica. Again, just a couple of weeks after I broke down everything there was to be said about Benfica. Now it is always weird whenever these European doubleheaders come in because I try and pack my previews with everything you need to know about the opposition and then we end up playing them twice. But instead of just sitting here and repeating everything that I said in that previous video, even though that would be a lot easier to actually do. We're not going to do that, people. Instead, we're actually going to have a look at how Benfica's been doing since we played them and talk about the interesting squad and player development that they are currently going through ahead of this game versus us. Starting off with how the team has responded since that six goal thriller versus Rangers, the way it actually ended what I could find across there and the reaction to that comeback draw versus Rangers, there was a lot of people being positive about Benfica saying, right, you managed to battle through with 10 men, let's go out there and do a statement now in our next game and build it back up because remember, before we played against them, they did receive a shock loss to Bo Vista 3-0, then they drew three each to Rangers, so there was a lot of people saying, right, this is the reaction now, they've showed the fight and desire, go out there and smash teams left, right and centre. Well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I'm sitting here to tell you, there's not really been much of a old reaction on, on, on. Because their next game of football after drawing with us was actually at home versus the old familiar foe Braga of last season. But Braga was hammering them 3 0 up to the 60th minute of that game, absolutely cruising before Benfica turned it on, made it interesting in the last 20 minutes by scoring two late goals. Seems to be the thing unfortunately. But the two late goals that time wasn't enough to save them from that defeat and after that game that is the first time in a very very long time that they've actually played three games without a win. Now unfortunately their winless run did end in their next match as they went ahead and played in a cup competition versus second division Pardes and despite resting five players there was a lot of people expecting Benfica to go out there and pump this second division team absolutely rotten just to get a bit of the feel good factor back out. But even that didn't happen. It was a bit of a lacklustre performance as they only came away with a 1-0 win which probably shows where they are right now in terms of their form. But I've just got to be honest, as encouraging as that is to read and see as a Rangers fan, I'm sure it is for a lot of people listening as well, I'm not really getting lost up in any of that because I've seen this Benfica side with my own eyes. When we played them, they moved the ball quite beautifully, especially before they were down to 10 men. They were slicing and dicing, showing that they can move the football. With how big this game is in terms of qualifications and again the money, because let's not beat around the bush here. This is one of the favourite teams to go ahead and win the entire competition so there's pressure on them to get this group done quickly so they can focus back into the league and I think that pressure right there and that carrot in front of them with uh, another big step towards qualification I don't think we're going to be seeing the Benfica side that's been feeling sorry for themselves lately and just going through the motions I think we'll see them back at their best Zamora with a point to prove especially with how the game went last time and Rangers inability to win when they were down to 10 men. Now, ironically, speaking of players being out and everything, actually transitions us into the biggest talking point about this Benfica side. Now, you may have heard bits and bobs about it because it's literally clickbaited everywhere. But yes, Benfica is missing five first-team players ahead of this game of football down to injuries slash COVID slash self isolation. But diving beyond that five first team players that's ruled out of this game versus Rangers and having a look at it, the most notable names for me that's missing in this game versus Rangers is going to be Adele Tarat, who 
again, wasn't necessarily fantastic in the game of football, but if you actually remember, it was his brilliant assist that split the two centre-halves for them to score in the last minute of this game, which is really weird because he assisted that, right? And he's now ruled out. Well, so is Darwin ruled out of this game, and that's obviously the centre-forward who sprinted through and scored, which probably shows that goal right there is cursed nearly as badly as all of us cursed it when it happened. Now, all painful jokes to one side. Both players are actually fine and will be eligible to play in the next European match, but they won't be able to play tomorrow because they are self-isolating. Someone else who obviously won't be able to play is going to be Nicholas Otamendi, but that's not down to anything else bar his obvious suspension. And then some people are saying that is a massive boost in this game, but to me, when you look at his replacement, Jardel, I'd actually argue he's exactly the type of centre-back you want in this game away from home, because this is cool, calm and collected as they come, a very well experienced centre-half, might not be as quick as Otamendi in that, but he's got it up here, so I, I wouldn't necessarily say that was a massive miss for them, I'd probably argue a better overall defender is the guy that's actually going to be playing. And that right there is kind of where I am with the rest of the players that's actually missing for Benfica. I'm seeing like for like quality in every single position. The only maybe loss I'd say that Benfica have versus us is going to be that young striker Darwin who looked fantastic when he came on. He certainly seems like a special talent. But the rest of them, you're saying, right, he's out the squad, but look who they're bringing in. He's worth nearly as much as him, maybe even more than him. So I'm not really getting caught up in the clickbait of five players missing. This is a team that's literally littered with players worth a hell of a lot of money and littered with quality so this is still a very very good Benfica side we will be facing the Mora. And with that being said that's just kind of done and dusted with the old Benfica preview. Yes they are missing some key players but they'll also be bringing players back into the team and I think the biggest takeaway you can have is because of the players that's missing they don't need to change nothing about how they set up, how they go about it, what formation they play, nothing will change a player will come in and play the exact same role. And I think that right there summarises this whole clickbait nonsense of who's missing and who's no. They'll still be able to play to their strengths and they'll certainly be looking to do that on that grass park at Ibrox the more so. Aye, that's everything done and dusted regarding Benfica. Now, it's time to flip over and talk about what matters most. And that is, of course, Rangers. And, you know, I was actually sitting back before I turned the camera on thinking about European football as a whole, and I was actually thinking about how many times I've actually been so annoyed at a league result, I've went and said, I can't be asked with European football. I wish we could just focus on the league. I've had that thought many, many times. Hell, I've even thought it this season, but I've kind of came to the, the understanding, or thinking at least, or this is just what I think is, that that right there is completely wrong, and... This is why. These trips, these games versus the very best that we can actually come up against, I think has actually gone a long way in mentally preparing and mentally toughening up our squad, helping to mature our younger players that we have in our team so now that we can actually reap the benefits of a truly well-balanced squad. For goalkeeper to striker, we've got a team now that's able, able to, sorry, to set up and handle different types of challenges and I think European football has played a massive actual part in that and I can see why Gerard rates the competition so highly not only for just the financial gain and the ability to attract better players because you're playing in European football but the development of your players has been put on a treadmill because of what they're coming up against in the long format that we are actually doing the length of time we are playing in these European competitions now are just sort of fast-tracking this development of players and it's night and day now. And as my old dad used to say, you play better when you're playing with better players. And I think if you go back and you trace our journey under Gerard to being embarrassed in European football under Pedro, to playing some horrific stuff in the league, to the three-year journey to where we are now, to doing so well and having so much respect from other European teams and also now performing and having a stranglehold in the league. I think after all that and seeing that transition, I can finally understand what my dad was saying. I don't know, maybe I'm not making any sense to anyone watching, but I think my outlook on European football has changed quite drastically, and I see these games now as a very important marker midweek to get us to that level so we can then perform it again in our league. But enough talking around the team, let's actually dive in and discuss some team news because unfortunately it is not great news as officially Ryan Jack is ruled out of the game and that to me is single-handedly bigger than any player Benfica 
is actually missing because you saw how well Ryan Jack played in that game versus Benfica. His def defensive awareness and with them going to come out basically right like a rocket and try and get this game done with, someone has defensive experience and understanding I think would have been absolutely massive in this game. But it does leave the door open for your Scotty Arfield to come in there and maybe right a wrong that he had in the last game versus Benfica. So no bad carrot to dangle in front of old Scotty Arfield and hopefully... He can take it. Now, unfortunately, the news doesn't get any better as Zungu is officially ruled out as well, who'd have probably be in that conversation to come in there and play for Ryan Jack. But yeah, he is officially ruled out until next week. So fingers crossed we see him back very, very soon. But thankfully, there is some good news as every other player, bar Katic, obviously, is fully fit and ready to go if selected versus Benfica. And that right there leads me perfectly into the old prediction on, on, on. Now you know a little bit more about Benfica and you know a little bit more about the game tomorrow. It is time for me and thee to try and do the impossible and that is predict a Rangers game. So dive in at the comment section below. Let me know your thoughts and opinions of why you guys are actually doing that. I'll give you mine very, very briefly. I'm expecting a true and utter blockbuster game of football. Like a basketball back and forth, back and forth. I'm expecting goals galore but I am expecting Rangers to come out and get the job done. Truly, that's just what I believe, people. I think the game's going to finish the old channel favourite Rangers 2, Benfica 1. Goal scorers Alfredo Morelos and Ryan freaking Ken. And with that being said, that is us all done and dusted in today's video. And that actually kind of reminds me to put my arm up. Some people were commenting saying, did you get sliced or anything like that in the air? No, it's actually a burn. I was cooking chips and I burnt myself in the... The cooker. I wish I had a cool, hard story, but I, I burnt myself cooking chips. People, it's my Ollie McBurney, if you will. I am a like this man. Anyway, let's wrap up today's video before more is unsubscribe after that joke. But I thank you so much for taking time of your day to sit here and talk about Rangers things. Hopefully you did get involved in the channel. If you did, I'll see you down there in the comment section below. Take care of yourselves, everyone. I'll see you in tomorrow's video. All the best and bye-bye.